For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. If the lives of the people are to be enriched and made meaningful, they have to be strengthened not only spiritually but also materially. Having realized this great need, SEDAC, the social arm of the Catholic Church in Sri Lanka, established by an Act of Parliament, Act No. 17 of 1983, has extended its hand to wipe the tears off the poor and the marginalized. As a humanitarian organization, the 50-year journey of SEDEC undertaken for the cause of building a just society cannot be covered within a short span of this presentation. SEDEC is directly under the guidance of the Commission for Justice, Peace and Human Development set up by the Catholic Bishops' Conference of Sri Lanka to carry out its responsibility and bear witness to the teachings of Jesus Christ, embracing the gospel values and the social doctrine of the Catholic Church in its work through a network of 13 diocesan centers operating in the 12 dioceses, helping the poor and the needy, irrespective of caste, creed and religion. Like many organizations, be it business or social, SEDAC too had humble beginnings. SEDAC was set up in 1968. Meanwhile, on a suggestion made by the Catholic Relief Services to set up an organization in Sri Lanka to provide and facilitate development, His Eminence Thomas Cardinal Curé, aware of the unique role that the Church could play, gave the leadership to establish an institute for social development in Sri Lanka and its direction was left in the able and experienced hands of Reverend Father Joe Fernando. The first office of SEDEC was in a tiny section under the staircase of the Archbishop's house at Baralla, which consisted of two tables, six chairs and a typewriter. Father Joe initiated several relief services including the construction of houses for the marginalized and the poor. In 1975, Father Joe was given a block of land at 45 Kings Road, Parala, on which he put up a small building as his office and gradually extended its humanitarian services to cover the entire island. The 1971 insurrection had its roots in the dissatisfaction experienced by the rural youth. SEDEC was actively involved in the rehabilitation of the youth who had been instrumental or had been influenced by this insurgency. Father Joe Fernando steered the ship from 1968 to 1980. Since then, the following directors efficiently manage the organization until the present day. During the early part of 1980s, SEDEC concentrated on developing small-scale credit societies and domestic hand loop industries for women. The ethnic riots in 1983 saw SEDE bringing into focus all its objectives. The government, being aware of SEDEC's operational network, assigned it to operate two refugee camps, one in Cotahena and the other in Avisavela. During the separatist war, 
that prevailed in the north and east. Sida carried out several humanitarian projects to bring relief to the affected people. Also, it carried out many projects to solve the water problem faced by the people of the North Central Province whose lives were endangered due to the widespread kidney disease. SEDEC is also involved in projects to bring relief to those affected by thalassemia disease. Amongst the other projects undertaken by SEDEC are scholarships for bright students living in the underdeveloped parts of the country, programs to assist the women who go to Middle East and Southeast Asian countries as domestic workers, programs to enrich the lives of the plantation workers, assisting and encouraging farmers to engage in productive farming without the use of harmful agrochemicals. SEDEC played a vital role in the national peace building process. It was able to set up 52 inter-religious forums and 40 peace committees Without any fear, SEDEC mediated in sensitive matters where the government could not get involved due to security or to other reasons. SEDEC also presented its views and proposals to the Lessons Learned and Reconciliation Commission, LLRC. SEDEC amply demonstrated its commitment and capabilities in the aftermath of the unprecedented devastation caused by the tsunami tragedy of 26 December 2004. After completing the relief and rehabilitation work, SEDEC was able to construct 6,500 houses, provided basic housing material for 24,000 families, conducted mental health clinics for 40,000 youth and adults, repaired schools for 12,000 children. During the final stages of the war, SEDEC provided relief to 97,000 people living in the Manic Farm Refugee Camp. SEDEC was in constant dialogue with the poor as well as the powerful and the rich. Over 50 years, SEDEC has borne witness to the teachings of Jesus Christ. Through its innumerable projects and programs, it has supported thousands of poor and marginalized families among such people are those affected by man-made as well as natural disasters, the victims of the separatist war in the north and the east, as well as the southern youth insurrections, plantation workers, agriculture farmers, fishermen, women and the youth. As SEDEC completes 50 golden years of service, it looks forward to continue with greater commitment and enthusiasm its mission of building up a truly just society based on peace, justice and integral human development. Truly, I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me.